Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. On today's show, we are going to talk about redecorating. It's kind of an upcycle. It is an upcycle. And you know, redecorating means something different to everyone. Well, that's why the projects all came out so different. I know, pretty cool. What are you making on today's show? I'm taking a glass vase and I'm covering it with um, yarns, but wait till you see the new product. Candice Jedrowitz is joining us today and she is redecorating a clock. And when you see the before and after, oh my gosh, what a difference. Cool. And I am doing reverse painting. Eco Heidi inspired me recently with some jewelry and reminded me it's really cool to do reverse painting. So I am repurposing frames. I love it. Don't go away, we'll be right back. It's time to redecorate. All right, you know, it's kind of like upcycling. For me, it's upcycling. I know, it's Eco Heidi does the <laughs> upcycling because when we talked about this earlier and you said upcycling, I said, but sometimes I need that fix to go out and buy something mm -hmm. that I may decorate. But the theme of today's show is about repurposing what you may already have around the house. Mm -hmm. You know, you, sometimes you need to watch those budgets and we need that fix. It just makes my heart sing when I can change just one thing in a room. Right. I love the fact that just taking and putting a little color somewhere makes all the difference in the world. And, and I need color. Heidi needs color. <laughs> in Heidi's living room, she chose the base of chocolate brown. Well, everything has been chocolate brown for a long, long time. Well, I time. also did that because of the dogs. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but you kept talking about that you wanted to put bright colored mm -hmm. pillows and you haven't gotten to that yet. Right. So did today's show kind of inspire you? Oh, to... it, it really did. I mean, as soon as you see what I, what I made today, my vase, this vase is going to go into my living room. Well, should we go ahead and, and jump on over and let's see how you made it? Okay. You want to go into your stash of jars because these work perfect for this project. Also, any of those vases that you get the fresh flowers in, the inexpensive vases, these are great. Here's another one. Any of these work perfect for this project. I'm also using a new product from Aline's. It's Aline's Tacky Double Stick Sheets. They come five inches by four and a quarter inch and they're perfect to put on. And I like to cut them into strips, some strips for each jar. And this is what I've started putting them on and all you do is take the top liner off stick it onto the jar and then when we're ready let's go around this side too when we're ready we're, we'll pull off the, the bottom liner just kind of take your nail and Remove that liner, place it on the jar. So what you have is a sticky dry adhesive. Now we're going to go down here where I've already put them on and we're just going to pull it off. And if you work a section at a time, it works really good. Choose your yarns, all kinds of really cool yarns. I have fun colors. I have even a one that has the pom-pom on it. Some yellow, some green. Choose all kinds of fun yarns. Look at look in your yarn box and even using the leftovers that you have maybe from a, a knitted project or a crochet project. I'm going to start with this one. And we're just going to put it into the tape into the sticky and just start and again we're using the Aline's tacky double stick sheets I'm 
just stick it in, go around and around. This product is amazing because it also holds on the flat marbles. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Let's get past this curve area. It's really pretty quick to, to do, too. It's like, I think this would be a project like in an hour project for a small jar, so really quick for gift giving. And anytime you want, you can change colors. Put some all tangled up there. I'm going to cut off that frayed edge because that's kind of hard to start with that. And then just start where you stopped again, pushing it in. And now before we run out of time, I want to show you on this upper part, I'm going to again take off the top layer of the Lane's Tacky Double Stick Sheets. And you can put on, if it's got a flat back, you can put on any of these flat marbles, some wandering paper, liner paper. And then what you can do is you can put the any of the yarn around it. So you just put on the yarn. And when you get to the to the marble, Oops, just push it, make sure you get it pushed in. Get to the marble, just go around it. And just start covering up all the sticky area of the tacky double stick sheets by Leans. Now there's also lots of fun yarns out there. So I want to show you even like the, the cool pom-pom. I'm going to go over on this side here. Make sure you get all of those pressed over really good. So you take the pom-pom yarn and just put it right in. It's sticky. It holds. It's fun. When you get to the end here, you know, I find that the pom-pom ones don't always match and I have like really close together. So then I just go back and cut one and then I stick it where I want. And then I just, again, I just keep filling in all my yarn. Let's take a look at my made up one. because here's where we put it on. Here's our pom-pom yarn. And also you can go back and forth with the yarn and just put it into the sticky area. Here's a fun, this yarn is this fun one here that has some extra little things hanging from it. And here you can see the, the uh, flat marbles and some more pom-pom yarn. And then I, I finish the top off with wrapping it back and forth. Lots of fun to do, and it uses things that you already have around the house. So don't you think this is going to be perfect in my living room? To no, no, <laughs> no. I think you need to give it as a gift. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, she likes it too. I love this space. Think of all the different color schemes you could do too. Like for your room, you would it would be perfect to do like whites for your shabby chic. Wouldn't that be fun? Mm -hmm. Oh, I might I might just make you a gift. <gasps> oh my <Yay>. gosh. <laughs>
But I love how you can take your jars and just upcycle them mm -hmm. and cover them. How easy this is. You know, for many years we've been using wet glues mm -hmm. and they're great, but with the new Aline's tacky double stick sheets, uh, how quick this project goes. I actually, when I made this one, I sat in front of the TV and I did it like in an hour and a half because it was a little bit bigger, but I just like, I just kept going and going and going and it was, in fact, I had left the top undone where it was glass. I brought it in in the morning and it was like, oh, I need to do more. <laughs> I just couldn't stop. It was, it was so much fun. I, I got instant gratification. I think that's really important. You know what? That's a really great way to mm -hmm. describe the mm -hmm. feeling that we get when we craft and this one was instant. Oh my gosh. And I won't take this since you're thinking about making one for me. I'm going to make one for you. I promise. Thanks. <laughs> now we're heading on over to Candace Jedrowitz's living room. She's done something pretty cool. She has. Now this is all about repurposing. So you're going to take a peek into her living room here and you're going to see a different side of Candace J. Hi Candace. Hi. Thank you Tiffany and Heidi. Hey. Welcome everyone to my very sedate and understated living room. This of course is my mantle and yes it looks like this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you know me and you know I don't do sedate and understated very well. Back me up on this. You have visited me many times in my studio. Isn't it kind of the polar opposite of sedate and understated? Well, with the cold weather approaching, I always get revved up to move things around and change them up a little bit. And here's something you may not know about me. I love clocks. I have lots of clocks. And this is a, a classical looking clock, and I'm not going to hold that against it, but I think this clock could be a fabulous focal point of a fabulous mantle. So let's go down to my studio and see what we can do. You can see I've already started my creative mischief making and I'm using a hot glue gun to stick the pieces on. I went through all my stuff and picked out some really cool blingy stuff. I laid everything out the way I wanted it and then I took a photo of it and then set it around in the place that I want it but not on the clock so that I could turn it and decide what else I wanted to put on the sides and the top. <laughs> Trying to not put my hand in the way. I'm going to do the very same thing for the top and the sides. I'm just going to add everything on with the hot glue for now. There might be some other things I would want to add. I might want to fill in the spaces. I might want to add some small beads. Oh, I am loving this. I still have a lot of the um, hot glue gun spider rub things to get off, but I will handle that. I want to add a couple of details now. Like, oh, I love this little guy. And I've been saving him for just the right piece of art, and this is it. 
So I have my little eyeball that goes there. And I have this little ice cream spoon that I think you kind of want to go at an angle like that. So let's put some glue there and a little glue there and see if we can't oops touch the glue there we go all right now oh, need a little more right there okay perfect one of the really awesome things about working with a hot glue gun is that it doesn't ruin the piece if you have to go back and take a little bit off because you forgot to do something. I have this wonderful trim and I want to be able to put things back on the bottom and it didn't wreck anything when I took them off. That's going to be lovely. I love it. It's so colorful and whimsical and kitschy. I got to play all day making that yesterday. I added some wooden feet on the bottom with some gems as well, and I like the whole look. I brought up a couple more pieces that I've done. This is a my poodle box, the lid rattles, the little doggies on the top there, and this one is a poodle sarcophagus also made from clay. This is like a breath of fresh air to me. I just love it. It's what I'm all about. It's colorful. It's wonderful. I just love it. And I'm so grateful, Tiffany and Heidi, that you guys invited me to be part of this episode because I needed this. And you know, you viewers out there, it doesn't take a lot to change the whole feeling of the room. I hope that you're inspired to try something like it. I hope that if you do, I get to see it. You can email me at Candice at CoolToCraft.com anytime with your photos and stories. Thanks so much for stopping in. I'm loving it. Bye, everyone. Candace has really taken all of those special finds that she has in her studio and around the house and put them to good use. You probably noticed that frame in my living room. Yes. I'm, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> but I was going to have more fun with it because I'm not getting anywhere with it. It just has a few little things that I'm collecting. So I was going to put a bowl of things and let all my guests glue on things for me. What a fun idea. Wouldn't that be cool? Because I, it's a big frame and I'm just not getting anywhere. Let's see, how many months have I been here? Three months now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not getting anywhere with that frame. A little bit of blue tape. <laughs> things off. So it's actually the same idea. So I'm going to I'm gonna do that. I'm definitely going to do that. I love the idea of having your guests. Does that mean each time I come in your front door that I can... I'll have it done in no time. <laughs> I know, because I come and go all the time. So that is a great idea from Candace J. And to be able to use all those interesting kitschy items mm -hmm. and knickknacks and such. Well, and I have a whole shelf of knickknacks that, that are in my bedroom. And I look at them and I'm thinking, I'm never going to use those, but why not put them into a cool frame that, that I'll use forever and, and also it, it'll become an art piece so I can pass it on to my kids or my grandkids. Sounds perfect. So I have your pattern. Speaking of frames, <laughs> <laughs> how many of you have frames with glass that you have picked up perhaps at garage sales or on special at your local craft store? And they're usually pretty much the same size, 8.5 by 11, 8 by 10, 4 by 6. Uh, if you don't have them, start looking for them because this project is fabulous right because you can get these for like 25 cents mm -hmm. and 50 cents all you need is the frame and the glass mm -hmm. and what you're going to do is to need to grab some patterns and Heidi grabbed my patterns you can either take just um, a photograph and you can mm -hmm. sketch a pattern from it there's uh, lots of great sources online for patterns so what I want to do is show you how to reverse paint on glass it's fabulous
The first thing that you will want to do is to remove your glass from your frame and give it a good cleaning. You will usually find that the frame glass has a coating on it that you want to be sure and clean off. The next thing you'll do is place your pattern underneath the glass. And the patterns can come from lots of different sources. Stained glass books make a great pattern for this technique. You can also trace a photograph of an actual flower and you're just tracing around the highlights of the flower so you can create your own pattern if you'd like to. I am using the Tulip Slick Paint and I'm choosing white for my design today because my finished project will have a very shabby chic look to it but you could certainly use any of the colors of the Tulip Slick Dimensional Paint. You want to tap that paint down into the tip and that's going to help to eliminate bubbles in the paint. If you get a bubble in it, it tends to spatter. You can fix that, but it's really great if, if you just tap it down first so that you don't have to worry about those bubbles. The next step is to start tracing. And as you can see on this design, I have lots and lots of lines to trace. So I'll get started here. I'm holding the tip right down on the glass and be sure that you join any of the intersecting lines. That's going to make it easier when you come back to paint this project. And I don't mind if my lines are a little bit thicker in one place or thinner in another. It's really just a matter of tracing right here. It, it's just like tracing in a coloring book, which is also another great source for patterns, depending on what sort of design that you want to do for your reverse painting. So just continue tracing your design until it's finished. While my large glass piece is drying, I want to show you how to do the reverse painting on this individual flower. What I have done on this piece is I've applied the Tulip Slick Paint, let this dry overnight, and then we're ready to reverse paint. So keep in mind, you're looking at the back side of your piece, this is the front. But all of that painting is done in reverse. You may, when you apply your paint, have some areas where the tip has pulled back through. If you want to, you can use a craft knife to pull that paint up, but honestly, I just leave it the, the way that it is. But if you're really fussy about the detail on this, just use a craft knife to clean up those lines. I have my acrylic paints on my palette here. And I have a couple of colors of pink and a really beautiful green, it's a eucalyptus green, and an antique white. And what's really cool about this technique is you can blend these together to get some other shading of colors. And so just keep in mind if you do that, if you're mixing some of your own colors, that you mix enough so that you have enough to put on two coats of paint, because I've found that I really do need two coats of paint. So you're just going to start filling in all of the areas of your design. So this is one coat and what happens when you turn it over is you will be able to see the brush stroke lines. And so I just let that dry and apply a second coat. You might want to plan in advance where you're putting your colors or just let it flow. <laughs> and you can see it's really easy to stay within the lines. And it doesn't matter if you overpaint the white on this side because this is the back side, so you're not going to see that. But what you do want to be sure is that you color right up to the white line and fill in that entire area with the colors that you want.
On these larger areas, I'm very generous with my paint color. so that it makes it a lot easier when I come back with my second coat of paint. Make sure you get it right up to the edge. Sometimes you have to turn it over to actually take a look to be sure that you haven't missed one little corner that still needs paint. So what you want to do at this point is continue painting your entire piece. By the time you get back around to where you started, that coat of paint is probably dry. You could also take your hair dryer to speed up the drying process in order to apply that second coat of paint. I am going to keep painting and show you the finished example. I have finished my painting and just a reminder this is the back side so it really doesn't look like much from this side but when you turn it over that is when you see your really cool design. There are a couple of different ways that you can finish the background. You can paint it with a solid color like I have done on my large floral design. Or let me share with you a couple of other different ideas. When it's time to put your glass back in the frame, I think it would be super cool to use scrapbook paper to the back. And you can see, depending on what paper you use, you can get a completely different effect. Now this one's really cool with the lettering in the background. That was an Eco Heidi selection. You, in this particular paper, you also can see some other designs. And I think that looks really good to the background also. Here's a funky look for you. I like this actually for a vintage look. This polka dot is really cool. And the back of one of these papers is a really bright pink. You might want to go in that direction. So have fun, play around, redecorate with reverse painting. What I love about the reverse painting is that you can create this no matter what style of decor that you have at home. You could take this same frame that you showed and you could put it on different fabrics or oh, look at kind of look I like the bright red behind this it. This is kind of romance. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of shabby chic. Right, and that was the polka dots, which yes. is one of my actually that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. so. It's my favorite too. Right. And you could, but this is a little bit romantic too, but a little bit different with the pink. And right, that. I want to sh hold that up because I don't think they can see it. We can, yeah. but it's that really bright pink, which I just showed. But um, I have gone from beach to antique to <laughs> contemporary to artsy to now it's shabby chic. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted something that have, I, I tend to when I design no matter what I do, it tends to have a little bit of a contemporary style to it. Yes. So the patterns that I pick today, even though they're shabby chic colors, have a little bit of a contemporary look. So it's contemporary shabby chic. <laughs> okay. Okay. It works. It, wor it totally works because <laughs> I, I love the way that your room is, is turning out. I mean, the things that you're putting into it, that um, and this, this totally works. And yet it would still work in my house too mm -hmm. by putting something else behind it. Right. Reverse painting it. As you can see, it is so easy because all you're doing is just tracing a pattern mm -hmm. with your 3D paints, your Tulip 3D paints. Again, it's an instant gratification. It's one of those instant uh, wowies. Right. You do have to let it set overnight that first step when you're tracing that glue. But has I, to I set. think we all have to take little bits and we don't all have like two or three hours to create a project. We need those little bits of time to create a project and as soon as it's done, it, it is, it's like a wow because we've taken that time for ourselves and for our homes. You know what the gratification is for me is that this worked. <laughs> you know, really, because there's a lot of projects that we do as designers that we try and try and do over and over again and by the time we actually come on air, it's like, I'm so tired of this project. <laughs> But that's what we do as designers, mm -hmm. to make it easier for you to create. Right. The reverse painting is one of those techniques that 
always works. Mm -hmm. And so we don't tire of it because there's the instant gratification. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know this is going to work. I know I can make this quickly. You know you can make your yarn vase mm -hmm. quickly and easily. Right. It, I'm, I'm going to have that instant gratification mm -hmm. no matter what. It's time for a recap of today's show. Okay. So let's uh, circle back around and let everyone okay. know what you created. I created the yarn vase. Now this is the vase that you would get flowers, like let's say your husband or, or friend or whatever sends you flowers, and they come in those really inexpensive vases, but they're the vases that you don't want to throw away. You just keep piling them up. Redecorate them, repurpose them, and I think it's fabulous. I really, really like um, the look of this. And as you mentioned, you can get so many different looks depending on what color yarns mm -hmm. that you create. And we're holding Heidi to it. She's creating one for me. I have a new shabby chic mm -hmm. look in my bedroom I'm trying to decorate for. And don't forget, too, the new product that I use because it's really important that when you do the things that we do, that you use the products that we do to get the same results that we get. Because if you go and use something else and it doesn't work, it's, I'm sorry. You got to use. You what we should use. listen to us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what we do. We are yeah. testing products constantly, mm -hmm. and so we're not going to have you use works. a product that that doesn't mm -hmm. work. So pretty cool. Also on today's show, Candace J showed us how to change just a drab clock, plain subtle clock, into kitschy kitschy coo is what she calls it <laughs> because of the colors of this and the all of the cool pieces that she has glued on it's very very kitschy and she has inspired me to finish my kitschy <laughs> i was calling mine a mosaic because i'm actually going to try and grout mine oh come on that just sounds so subtle you <laughs> no. need to come up with a fun name i'm going to grouty it <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> but she really did inspire me to um to finish it plus it allowed you to know what I actually was doing with that frame. Yeah, I, I noticed it, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> uh, that and, is pretty neat. And your project today was fabulous. Thank you. And it was funny because Heidi's comment on this project was, boy, you're sure putting a lot of time into this. <laughs> but I told her there's so many times when we're designing. Well, first of all, let me tell everybody about this project. This is where you take a frame that you perhaps picked up, perhaps have picked up at the craft store or at a thrift store or a yard sale and you reverse paint on it. I used the Tulip 3D paint to outline my designs and then used acrylic paint to fill in the paint colors on the flowers. So it's reverse painting. And it's super easy. Heidi was jabbing me, teasing me <laughs> about how much time I put into this project. <laughs> and I told her, you know, so many times we have to get projects done for to get them online or for a video, but mm -hmm. this I was creating for my room, and I don't do that very often. No. I don't craft for myself, and I guess I approach this differently. Well, it's kind of interesting that we both on this project created for ourselves, and we didn't really know it until we got into the project, because we don't do that for ourselves like we should. Yeah, it was a big aha. It was <laughs> a big awakening, the big aha moment. We're going to have to do more like this. I know. I. I want to pick more shows that I can craft <laughs> for my space and yeah. redecorate my space. Yes, I think that's great. I would like to invite all of you to head on over to facebook.com slash cool to craft and like us if you haven't already done so. We post video links, we post project links, we post all sorts of happenings at cool to craft and it's a great way to keep up to date with what we're doing and chat with us because we're always checking out what's going on and a lot of times our friends and fans will post questions there about mm -hmm. how to use products and so head on over we have over that seven seven thousand <laughs> seven thousand likes i'm so excited to say that seven five times thousand <laughs> likes seven thousand <laughs> likes seven thousand <laughs> likes i'll get that out and we also want to invite you to head over to cool to craft.com and you know you can click on the RSS feed and so you are, are updated each time that we post on the site. So tell me what the RSS feed because I don't think I've done that. You haven't done that? If what you take it? a look in the, um, let me see how I can explain this, the right where it has the URL address to the right there's usually an orange and white little box that looks like it's broadcasting signals. When you click on that you can choose to have all of the posts that are updated on the site come into your email box. <laughs> Then you'll know what I'm doing. That. Yeah, thank so you. So that's how you, and any blog, you can, you should be able to do that. You just click on the RSS feed, and I choose to get emails. So if there's a blog that I want to follow, and I don't want to have to keep going mm -hmm. back and back and back to that website, 
the emails come in to me every time they post. That is so cool. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Thank you for asking because I didn't even think about yeah. that a lot of our friends and fans Wouldn't know would that not know that. Is, yeah. Also, when you're at Cool to Craft, you do want to click on the icon that's for our Fave Crafts newsletter. You certainly do because on Tuesdays and Fridays now, a Fave Crafts Cool to Craft newsletter comes out with all of our ideas. And we also do um, all of these have the step by step photos so that you can see how to do it step by step if you don't want to watch the video. And that's something I'm really fussy about is getting those uh, how to photos. She really is. <laughs> it's like I'm constantly <laughs> nagging Heidi, have you done your step, step outs? No, because not yet. I think that helps all of you a lot more the more photo step mm -hmm. outs that we have. It's a lot of work for us, but mm -hmm. that is what I want done. <laughs> so be sure that you go click on the little link that says newsletter. I think it's at the top of the page on the right and it says Cool to Craft Newsletter and sign up because there's lots of information. And don't forget to click somewhere on the page for Almost Daily. Yes, it should be right below that other link. And Almost Dailies, I haven't been keeping up so good with because I've been well, busy. You will. you will. Right. What Almost Dailies are is our newsletter. You sign up to receive a newsletter in your in basket and it's behind the scenes what's going on at Cool to Craft and just some ideas that we have. We may want to share a recipe. We may want to share an idea. Mm -hmm. Heidi does lots of really cool illustrations for some of the stories that we do and ideas and information that we run across. Also though, what I'm trying to get everyone to do at Cool to Craft is a little video and it may be that Heidi's going to give you an extra hint on her vase. You can bring your vase in since I'm pointing off camera. <laughs> it may be that I can get Heidi to do a, another little hint about a vase because you know what you didn't do is you didn't exactly show how oh, you did yeah, the fridge. That. Little things like that where we have little bonus videos mm -hmm. and information. So or sometimes I think she's going to even surprise me and put some little bloopers in there and things like that. Because oh really? <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Would I do that to you? Yes. Heidi was so mean to me when I was a kid that I'm going to be paying her back for the next <laughs> 20 years. And so <laughs> head on over and sign up for not Almost Daily. I wasn't nice to her though. She was my little sister. <laughs> well, she's still my little sister. <laughs> and you're really change. nice to me now. <laughs> uh, that part hasn't changed, the fact that I'm still your little sister. <laughs> the part about being really mean to me when I was a kid. You were kind of a brat. No, no, no. Couldn't have been. So <laughs> did we cover everything we need to? We'll put that in Almost Daily. <laughs> you can I tell, me, we tell everybody about what you did to me when I was a child. <laughs> I'm not going to do so. that. I'll just tell her I'm being nice to you and I'll make you, I'll make you a face to make you, it up for you. Yeah, I love my sister. Everything that um, you have always done for me is always made up for locking me in closets when I was a kid. So I think we just want to wrap up by telling everyone to get creative, get inspired, and be, be cool. Bye-bye.